What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Hugh, and you're watching TF4 Talk. This is just the web series where we talk about Transformers Age of Extinction. This is episode number 17, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a Blu-ray review for Transformers Age of Extinction. Yesterday, on September 30th, Transformers Age of Extinction arrived on home video release. So for DVD, 2D Blu-ray, and 3D Blu-ray. Only three months after its release in North America on June 27th, finally, Transformers Age of Extinction is here, and I actually pre-ordered it on Amazon.ca for $29. $9.99 plus taxes in Canadian dollars and it arrived on my doorstep yesterday. So I'm very happy with that. I got the 3D Blu-ray combo pack and it comes with this really cool 3D lenticular cover on the slip case. And one thing you got to know and I just got to clear up some confusion and that is the 3D combo pack is the only version which comes with the full frame IMAX presentation. So the full frame format where you get the expanded image only can be seen if you get the 3D, uh, 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 3D version of the film. Now, of course, you have to have a 3D TV and a 3D Blu-ray player to view this. So if you don't have that, you got to get the 2D Blu-ray. But uh, just to let you know, the 2D Blu-ray does not come with the expanded image. Okay, I need to clarify that because there are some movies that actually still do the full frame format even though it's not in 3D. The reason why it's only available in the 3D Blu-ray is not only because Paramount wants to milk you for a lot of money, but actually the movie was actually filmed with the state-of-the-art brand new IMAX 3D cameras. So by default, the IMAX presentation is in 3D. Okay, so there you have it. Now, once you take out the slip cover, you get four discs. You get the 3D Blu-ray, you get the 2D Blu-ray, you get special features discs, and you get the DVD. So that's four discs. And what's really great is that all the special features are all on its own disc because there's just a lot of them and they take up a lot of space. That's why they couldn't fit it on the 2D Blu-ray. And the 2D Blu-ray actually, uh, you know, takes up a lot of space because one thing you gotta know is that audio tracks take up a huge amount of space on a Blu-ray disc. It comes with, uh, I think it comes with six or seven uh, um, uh, blue, uh, six or seven uh, audio tracks. Let me just confirm that. You get the Dolby Atmos, you get the 5.1 English, 2.0 English, French 5.1, Spanish 5.1, Portuguese 5.1, and English audio description. So that's a lot of tracks and the Dolby Atmos track actually takes up a lot of space. So that's why it's got to be on its own disc and the special features are separate from uh, the, 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 uh, the, the feature film disc. All right. So very, very cool. Now, um, this is a Blu-ray review. I'm not here to review the movie. I'm here to review the Blu-ray itself, the Blu-ray combo pack to see if it's worth your money to let you know if it's worth, uh, uh, it's got the value that's worth it for you to pick it up. All right. I've watched this movie eight times now. Once on home video release and seven times in the theater. Of course, the first time I watched it was the best. And even though I've watched it eight times and, and um, including one time on home video, my feelings about, uh, about this movie still are the same. I still think this movie was a lot of fun. I think it was very entertaining. I thought it was awesome. It does come with problems, but uh, uh, even though I've watched it on home video, I don't feel that it was better. I don't feel it was worse. It's still the same to me. Okay, so I'm here to review the Blu-ray and the first thing we got to talk about is the picture quality. Is the picture quality awesome? Of course it is. This is a Michael Bay film and Michael Bay is someone who gives you the best of the best. Okay, he uses the best technology in, in terms of uh, uh, film film production. He likes to use the newest and latest technology in camera gear and of course he gives you the best sound. But as for the, the picture quality, it's superb. Expect the best from Michael Bay. Uh, we get a really, really sharp uh, looking presentation. Colors are very vivid and um, it's, also, it's also interesting to know that you can kind of see that it was filmed in two different formats. In the IMAX for presentation and also um, the standard standard uh, digital uh, uh, film cameras, you know, they filmed it in 2K, 4K, 6K, using the the Red Dragons as well as a lot of other types of cameras, including GoPros. Um, uh, but um, but it was also filmed using IMAX cameras, and you can kind of tell when they're they're filming in IMAX cameras that because the pictures is exceptionally sharp. 
Okay, it looks really, really good, but I'm sure it would look better in the blue in the 3D Blu-ray uh, presentation. I'm just reviewing the 2D Blu-ray presentation of it. All right, now um, just like a lot of uh, uh, like a lot of the other Michael Bay films, the picture, while it is really great and really sharp looking it still isn't without a little bit of grain. And now the grain only appears in, in my opinion, when I watch it, I feel that the grain really only appears in interior low light shots, okay? In a lot, in a lot of scenes with low light in, inside, like inside a building, in, in interiors, you can see a lot of grain, you can notice some grain in the, um, in, in, in the black areas. Okay, but uh, when you're outside, you don't notice it as much, um, mostly because they are probably using the IMAX 3D cameras for those shots, and it cleans up a lot of that grain, all right? But uh, other than that, this is probably the best presentation in any Blu-ray, okay? So very, very good looking picture quality. Now as for the audio, I, I watched it with the Dolby Atmos track. Now I don't have a Dolby Atmos receiver, nor does one exist. So uh, basically what you got to do is you got to use a um, 7.1 receiver and, and download the firmware to, to um, get that Dolby Atmos effect, okay? But uh, I have a 5.1 um, presentation and I decided to switch on to the Dolby Atmos presentation and it sounds good. I, in fact, it sounds really, really good. Now, one thing I notice about the Dolby Atmos uh, 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 presentation on my 5.1 system is that there's a lot of bass. The bass is pretty heavy on this, but the sounds are still quite clear. The voices and dialogue is very, very clear, like exceptionally clear. Um, but um, but the, the bass is really, really thumping, which is expected. I mean, when I watched it in the theater, it was really, really pounding. So we get that same sort of effect in the audio presentation, but I was actually really impressed by how clear the dialogue was. All the voices and all the dialogue was actually all very clear. And of course, you get the standard uh, 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 surround sound effect with a bit the bullets whizzing by and all the the transformations the sound effects are actually very very unique with um with you know the sound design and the sound editing and and skrillex's uh contribution so when you hear it in the dolby atmos track or rather the 5.1 track it sounds really really sharp so i'm really impressed with the audio quality and uh i didn't listen to any of the other ones like i just listened to the dolby atmos track on my 5.1 setup and it sounds great now let's really get down to the to the real deal, and that is the special features. Okay, let's talk about the special features. Um, expect like huge special features. I'm talking about a very very comprehensive uh, uh, behind the scenes look at this film. Just like all the previous releases, this one does not disappoint. Okay, first of all, let's just start off with um, this 10 minute uh, 10 minute and 45 seconds feature it called. Bay on action, and it's a behind the scenes look on the action that Michael Bay presents. Now he talks about uh, uh, a lot of um, a lot of really interesting things about uh, about um, the action, including the fact that they used a brand new camera system, uh, which is able to bring the the camera uh, in inside a car and move around and go outside of the car, and that was really really cool. That that was actually something very interesting, and of course you know you get your standard car chases and explosions and he talks a little bit about that now this is a 10 minute and 45 second uh, uh, featurette so it covers a lot of material but it's still a very general um, general presentation on, on the, the behind the scenes look of, of, um, of uh, the action as directed by Michael Bay so uh, there you have it that was a very uh, that was a pretty cool uh, presentation the next one is called just another giant effing movie okay and uh this one is something that i really really liked because it's actually a combination of um kind of like a like a production diary not really i wouldn't no not a production di diary scratch that it's a present it's almost like a combination of a featurette and a music video the first half of it or the first third of it is uh is just a uh, a uh, 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 regular day on set uh, you see some people talking to the camera being interviewed and you seeing some things going on on set and then afterwards it transforms into a music video and it's really really cool it actually shows you two different things how intense it is to work 
on a Michael Bay Transformers film and how fun it is to work on a Michael Bay Transformers film. So very, very cool. The, the featurette, uh, uh, just another effing movie, is 10 minutes long. Okay, moving on, we have a spark of design. It's a very, very uh, interesting uh, featurette, which talks about the production and design of, of, of the, the Transformers toys at the Hasbro headquarters in Rhode Island. And now this is very, very cool because it shows you what goes into the making of, of a toy, specifically the Stomp and Chomp Grimlock. And they spend 15, 15 and a half minutes talking about this. So uh, if you are interested in the production of the toys, this will be very, very uh, fascinating to you. Moving on, we have TJ Miller Farm Hippie. This is something that I felt was um, kind of questionable. <laughs> it follows TJ Miller around in a kind of like a vlogging style uh, 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 video. It's 19 minutes and 43 seconds long and it's really, it's kind of self-indulgent. It, it's really just about TJ Miller and uh, how nobody really um, acknowledges him as a supporting character in the film. <laughs> Uh, not even Michael Bay. And it's all for comedy. It's supposed to be funny. Uh, he does these interviews with Mark Wahlberg, Michael Bay, and Kelsey Grammer. And uh, it's just all for comedy. It doesn't talk a whole lot about the movie. It's really just about him. And um, I thought the only interesting parts were really when um, when he he visited Bay Films, the office of the offices of Michael Bay. That was the only part that I found really interesting. But the rest of it is just all comedy, which has not a whole lot to do with the movie. So um, they just threw that in, which I felt was a kind of um, they didn't it wasn't necessary. I mean, uh, it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with Transformers: Age of Extinction. Next, we get some trailers. We get the trailer one. Uh, which is the first teaser trailer, not the Super Bowl trailer, uh, which was, it is uh, two and a half minutes long. And then trailer two, which is the final theatrical trailer, uh, which is two and a half minutes long. You get the Creo Transformers trailer and the Angry Birds Transformers, tra excuse me, Transformers trailer, which I didn't bother to check out those because I wasn't really interested in. Now, the one thing that makes this Blu-ray awesome is this, uh, this feature length documentary uh, called Evolution Within Extinction. Now I say that it's feature, uh, a feature length because it's two hours long when you combine all the smaller featurettes together. Okay, it talks about a lot of stuff. Now I'm gonna break it down for you. Uh, this this uh, this entire uh, featurette, is, I mean this entire documentary is two hours long when you watch when you play them all consecutively. Uh, it first starts off with a featurette called Generation Two, which is 16 minutes long. And it talks about how this is different, how Age of Extinction is different from, from the first three films and how they introduce all new characters, uh, including human characters as well as new uh, villains and new Autobots. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's a pretty, pretty cool uh, uh, featurette, all right? Moving on, we have Drive Like Hell, and that's 13 minutes and 30 seconds long. And it talks about all the cars, all the new cars that are introduced in uh, Transformers Age of Extinction. And, and uh, not just the cars that were featured in them, but uh, the designing of the brand new Optimus Prime, as well as the car stunt work in Transformers Age, Ex Age of Extinction, which includes uh, training uh, uh, Jack Rayner to be ready uh, to drive the, the Chevy Sonic RS. So he, you see a little bit of a section where he goes through driving school, or rather stunt driving school. So, so very, very cool. Uh, the next one's called uh, Small Town Big uh, Small Town Big Movie, and that's 11 minutes and 23 seconds long, and it's really all about Texas. Now, Michael Bay really wanted this movie to start off in Texas because he wanted to start off in uh, in a simple life. Okay, small town, simple life, not a whole lot of excitement going on. And it was very important to him to have that kind of progressive nature in the storytelling. So that's why there's this featurette called Small Town Big Movie. It starts off small, but it leads to something big. And this is all about Texas. From, from uh, Cade's uh, house to Cade's lab, all the way to the Texas chase in, in the various uh, uh, towns and cities of Texas. Uh, for the Texas chase, they actually combined several um, several uh, locations in Texas to make up 
that big chase sequence. So that was pretty cool. The, the, that featurette, Small Town Big Movie, is 11 minutes and 23 seconds long. Next, now this is the one I like the most. This featurette is the one I like the most in the Evolution Within Extinction uh, 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 documentary, and that is, it's called a Shadow Protocol Activated. And what it's about is all the locations, all the specific locations that they filmed at, and all the, the, the different action sequences that were filmed at each location and why they filmed at those specific locations. Another thing that's interesting about it is that they get right into the full details of, of, uh, of each different location. For example, the GM Lansing plant and also this, this, uh, this building that they used as the CIA headquarters and as well as, you know, all the various locations in, in Hong Kong and China. So, um, you know, that one was very, very cool and it's very, very comprehensive. It's 28 minutes and 46 seconds long and I thought that one was the most interesting place. Now, you, uh, interesting featurette rather. Now, uh, uh, of course, with Michael Bay, if you follow Michael Bay's films, uh, he's a director who likes to be the first one at everything. The first one to use new camera technology. The first one to, to, to do something at in, in a movie and the first one to to use uh, specific uh, props and cars in a movie and the first one to film at a location so that's why there's so many different uh, unique locations in this film it's because uh, his location scouts were really good at finding some really unique locations and uh, it's all covered in this featurette called shadow protocol activated all right moving on we have this 11, 11 minute uh, uh, featurette called the last stand and the last stand is really about the Hong Kong battle uh, and um, the, it's specifically the Hong Kong battle that takes place in Detroit and Chicago. Uh, as you already know, most of the, uh, the the battle in Hong Kong actually took place not in Hong Kong. It actually took place in Detroit and Chicago. And they'll explain all about it, how they transformed an American city into a Hong Kong battleground. And it's very, very interesting. It's called The Last Stand and it's 11, 11 minutes long. Okay, Moving on, we got The People's Republic. And... This featurette is 12 minutes and 54 seconds long and it covers all the filming in Hong Kong as well as in China. Now this one was actually very fascinating to me but I kind of wish that it would go on for a little longer because there was, I felt that following the Transformers Age of Extinction production in Hong Kong was very, very interesting. I was actually really excited during the production of Transformers Age of Extinction when uh, when they were filming in Hong Kong uh, because you got to see all all the, like all that this exciting city has to offer. Uh, but they only talk about it for just maybe less than half of this featurette. The rest of the time is uh, is done is used talking about China. I wish they could have went into more detail going on about Hong Kong, but they made thing that they really have to tell you about Hong Kong is that they can't lock down a street to film in Hong Kong so what they got to do is they just have to make it work they just got to it is what it is they just got to film it there very guerrilla style not a whole lot of setup and just move as fast as you can before it gets too crowded in the streets so uh, that's very interesting and what's also very interesting about uh, the, the People's Republic featurette is that they tell you all about what it's like to film at the Wulong Karst, a geological park. That was really cool because it's not a place that is very easily accessible. So they had to bring all the camera gear and all the equipment, um, you know, by, by, by hand and by walking. And of course you get to see a little bit of the filming in the, the Great Wall of China. So very, very awesome. And uh, that's definitely worth checking out. Now the next one is called Rise of the Dinobots. That's only six minutes long. And what it's really about is your standard, um, designing of characters uh, feature it, uh, of course featuring uh, a lot of the staff from and designers from ILM all right now we've seen this sort of thing before in the previous three uh, Transformers blu-ray releases this one's no different except they're specifically talking about Dinobots all right so very very interesting of course if you're into visual effects and design now the final uh, the final feature is called the finishing touch is 22 and a half minutes long and this covers everything about post-production from from sound design to 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 uh to uh the making of sound effects to the scoring of the film to the editing which was actually very very interesting i found the editing sequence very very interesting and fascinating uh all the way to the voice acting um and of course um 
the premiere in Hong Kong. So that was a lot of material to cover for this feature called The Finishing Touch. Once again, it's 22 and a half minutes long. And it all these little featurettes make up a two hour documentary called Evolution Within Extinction. Now, the, this is really just, uh, really just covers the various aspects of getting Transformers Age of Extinction produced from beginning to end. But it, in no way is it a production diary. Now, if you've seen the Bad Boys 2 production diary, you know what that's like. They take you right into the front lines of the behind the scenes, like taking you day to day of what it's like to film each major sequence. So it's not a production diary. It is really just um, a bunch of featurettes which, which uh, cover a lot about the production of Transformers Age of Extinction and it's very very comprehensive it's actually very very awesome and um, this is definitely uh, one of the best parts about uh, the Transformers Age of Extinction Blu-ray release now I gotta say that the only thing I'm really disappointed about with this Blu-ray release is once again no audio commentary now I understand why they, they, they don't have audio commentary in the last a uh, few films, Bad Boys 2, uh, 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 Dark of the Moon, Pain and Gain, and now Transformers Age of Extinction. Apparently, uh, these films just, uh, uh, um, you know, with all the stuff that they put into it, there's a lot of work involved. But also, the disc itself can't probably can't hold that much data. Okay, the audio tracks actually take up a lot of space, especially with the Dolby Atmos track to add another track. Uh, an audio commentary track, probably not enough space to put it in, but I would have liked that. The main reason why is because I want to know what it was like from the very beginning. I mean, the fact that Michael Bay was reluctant to make Transformers Age of Extinction is already a story within itself. So I would have liked to hear his own words about how this came about from beginning to end, from the very, very beginning. So I'm a little disappointed about the fact that there's no audio commentary. Another thing that you got to know is uh, uh, about this Blu-ray is that there's no deleted scenes. No deleted scenes whatsoever. It doesn't mean that there was nothing le left on the cutting room floor. It's actually because they just didn't include it. Now I know for a fact that there are deleted scenes because in the TV spots there was a scene where Tessa was dancing with Bumblebee. That's one deleted scene. There's also another scene where Kelsey Grammer and J uh, and James Savoy actually were in their in their vehicle in Hong Kong and they ran over a, a Chinese government official. Okay, they cut that out because of the China censorship. The the Chinese government or the the the, the studios they did not like that. The production company, which was financing co-financing Transformers: Age of Extinction, didn't like that scene and they wanted it cut out of the film. Okay, the third scene that I know about is apparently there was supposed to be a scene where Li Bingbing and Stanley Tucci's character were 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 in a scene which had brains talking to them. That scene was also cut out of the film. So that's three deleted scenes which are not included in a deleted scenes behind a uh, uh, featurette i mean special features option for the for the special features disc all right so that wasn't included another thing that would have been cool would that would be included would be concept art but then all that stuff is available online so i'm not too too big on that i don't really care as much about that all i really cared about was the audio, audio commentary and some deleted scenes to know what we were missing okay but other than that this Blu-ray gets uh, a four, 4 out of 5. I, I'll give this Blu-ray a 4 out of 5. I was really big on that audio commentary. Uh, so because of no inclusion of that, deduct 1 point. But everything else is spectacular. This is definitely demo material. You must get this film. Regardless if you don't like it or not, this is is home theater demo material. And it doesn't get any better than this, both in sound and and picture quality. They shot in 6K. They shot with state-of-the-art IMAX 3D cameras. They also are using, for the very first time, the Dolby Atmos track, which has never been used before or never been featured on any Blu-ray, making Transformers Age of Extinction the first Blu-ray to have the best visual and audio presentation. Okay, so there you have it. That is why you absolutely must get this film on Blu-ray. And uh, whether you like it or not, just just watch it for for the, the the technical aspect of the film. It's a great technical technological achievement as a film. And um, there you have it. Four out of five for me. Maybe a four and a half out of five.
So that's all I gotta say in this video. As always, if you enjoyed this review, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Raging Nation. Also follow me on Twitter, at Raging Nation. My name is Antu, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Who uh, uh, makes a lot of films that rely heavily on visual effects, and he's proved that he can make a pretty decent robot film with Pacific